So things look bad and your back's against the wall. Your whole existence seems so hopeless. You're feeling filthy like a dive bar bathroom stall. Can't face the world sober and dopeless. You've lost your way. You think your life's a wreck. Well, let me just say you're correct. You're a loser, baby. A loser, goddamn baby. You're a screwed up little whiny bitch. A loser just like me. You're a screws loser. Loose boozer and only one star abuser. You're a power bottom at rock bottom, and you've got company. It's the channel chasers pod. What up, everybody, and welcome to the grand opening, or I guess <laughs> grand opening of the channel chasers hotel. I mean, the channel chasers podcast. I am, of course, your host, Jay, and joining me as always are my partners in crime, Brian and Tony, and we have a special new resident to the pod, Mr. David, how you doing tonight, boys? Are you ready to go to hell? Can I get a hell yeah? Hell yeah! Can't wait to be burning alive. All right, we are here tonight to discuss the long-awaited big sister show of the Hellverse has been Hotel. This has been a long time coming. Uh, I saw this pilot like five years ago when it dropped and completely forgot about it funny enough until david you know i met david and then david brought up hey you, you know you like the show tunes and uh, disney and stuff you ever hear about hell of a boss i'm like what's hell of a boss he shows me hell of a boss and i'm like wait this looks like has been hotel it's like yeah it's the same universe oh shit really and ever since i've been hooked on uh, hell of a boss me and david uh watch it on stream all the time over on his channel i will leave it linked for the youtube people down below uh but yeah so we had to bring david along he he told he told me he would not forgive me if he was not added as a guest to this episode so here he is three times you're supposed to fight me i got post office to someone else so yeah about the late time so yeah uh we're definitely excited to talk about uh this show uh i after after talking up has been a hell of a boss so much i eventually convinced brian and tony to watch it too uh they've all talked about it on screen time so we really don't need a segment to talk about like everybody's history because both of you have already talked about kind of your thoughts on it we'll uh, we'll let david yeah. We'll let David discuss it in a bit, but of course we can't uh, jump fully into the discussion yet because we always got to start off by jumping right into the news with Brian. Unfortunately, people, we have to start off on a sad note. What has become, unfortunately, a segment for us, and that is in memoriam. Uh, before we get into like news, news, thought we should take some time to honor the late great Carl Weathers. You son of a bitch! Oh man, yeah. love that guy. Guy. Uh, but you know, the original Predator, uh, Apollo Creed of all things, a video? uh, recording, but yeah, Apollo Creed and you know, Action Carl, if you remember Toy, uh, Toy 4, uh, a bunch of other and things, Man's a Legend, Mandalorian. Oh, yeah, he was Greek Cargo. I, for some reason, I forgot Greek Cargo, and that was the most recent thing. Yep, and he's kind of, I didn't realize this until seeing a video from Geek Pollution about this, mm -hmm. but uh, he's kind of been like one of those actors that has just been like there, and sometimes you forget about him but every time he's there he's great yeah it's it, it it reminds me of like somebody like ernie hudson you know he's never like a oh, lead yeah. lead but whenever you see him in a thing he's great indeed um and carl also was good at comedy along with action because he was also in happy gilmore oh yeah dude dude was legendary uh, he will be missed for sure rest in peace mr weathers mm -hmm. indeed very multifaceted great actor will be missed now on to our main story this one's going to be kind of a little bit distressed jointed but we're possibly having a tv history oh here with this do y'all remember when uh youtube tried to do their own like original programming yeah 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 because uh video game high school was a part of that i think oh yeah and the how cobra kai saw it yeah cobra kai was up there yeah there was a youtube red original and then it moved to netflix yep. after youtube red dropped it for some reason well they dropped every it's no it, it was no more ah. and basically the people that were like actual factual youtubers that they gave their shows to like pewdiepie like, markiplier retin link and uh game grumps i forgot game grumps had a show they actually did
did a scripted show where it was a basically a competitive uh, a show about wanting to be professional competitive games hmm. gamers interesting i've heard good things but i haven't watched it yet but th we're not here to talk about that duo we're here to talk about the other duo that i mentioned because Rhett and link they were a part of that and that fell through and apparently ever since then they have while they've been doing their great stuff like great mythical morning good mythical morning wow. and the various sketches and stuff that they've done they've also behind the scenes been trying to talk to producers about getting their own show off the ground like actual factual on a network okay or streaming site and for years they've been told oh you're not the right brand or oh you're just a youtuber yeah or it's not the right time they even said that they got to one place and they were actually going to like go for it but then they wanted them to completely like tool it around their network oh. and like adjust it to what the network wanted for their general audience mm -mm. so being fed up with all of that they have announced today as of recording that they are working on their own screen scripted show that will be released exclusively on the Rhett and Link YouTube channel. Oh, nice. Going and, completely indie. I respect it. And they're releasing a, like they said, this is going to be a full on released week to week, fully scripted, fully acted like TV, TV show. Nice. That they're just releasing on YouTube themselves. So kind of a little bit of TV history, possibly. Yeah, yeah it's very similar to Vizzy Pop situation with has been and hell of a boss, <laughs> you know. Uh, well, still hell of a boss, no longer has been because she just, you know, she has it with Amazon. But hell of a boss is just like that, where it's all Patreon funded, and uh, you know, yeah. it's TV quality animation, full twenty minute episodes, like a regular, you know, TV show cartoon. But it's all on YouTube for free. Yep, and they said that they're not doing like crowdfunded thing for this. Oh, but. It's because they're getting so much money and stuff from Good Mythical Morning because they basically said that what's oh. fueling this and what's paying for this is Good Mythical Morning. That makes sense. Okay, I was gonna say that's ambitious to not to not go for not go the Patreon route. Okay, cool, good for them. Happy for them. And for anyone worried out there, they have said that they're not going to stop Good Mythical Morning. This is just another project that they do, like, on top of their podcast, their skits, Good Mythical Morning, all of that. This isn't replacing anything. It's just adding on. Mm -hmm. So that's our one news story. Hopefully, good things to come. When they release the trailer, I'm probably going to put it in trailer talk. And who knows, maybe depending on how it is and when it comes out, possibly cover it for the oh, show? Oh, yeah. No, definitely. If it is. <laughs> Like, I, I, I always want to support, you know, fellow creators. So I'd be down if we have to, I'm in the schedule. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> so with the news done, it is that time once again, folks. It is screen time. Screen time is that segment of the podcast where the boys and I discuss the different pieces of the media we have been consuming in between podcast episodes. Uh, really, for me, the only stuff I've been consuming is stuff that I've watched with these fools. So it's my screen time is our screen time, essentially. Uh, so, uh, the only thing that isn't, uh, like something that I experienced with the boys is, uh, like I said last week, I bought Tekken this week and it's fucking awesome. I used to spend hours and hours and hours at the arcade as a kid playing Tekken and it's like riding a fucking bike and now this whole thing it just it runs so smooth the graphics are crisp the story mode was amazing I I was blown away by it and they brought Tekken Ball back that feels like that was in there just for me <laughs> Uh, I was, I was hyped, uh, it's a really good game. If you enjoy fighting games, and in particular, if you've enjoyed Tekken at any point in your life, you will enjoy Tekken 8. Uh, I really recommend it. Uh, the other things, like I said, were stuff that I watched with the boys. Uh, one thing I watched, it was just me and Tony. Uh, so, Tony, let's talk about Alexander becoming a god. Oh, yeah. That, oh, it's a great, uh, his, history, uh, documentary about Alexander the Great and his rivalry with Darius the Third. Persia. Yeah, it's made by the same. It's it's done by the same group that did the documentary series we talked about before on Scream Time called uh, no, uh the Age of Age of the Samurai about uh the the Warring States period and the rise and fall of Nobu Oda Nobunaga. So you know if you enjoyed if you actually followed our recommendation and checked that out and you like that, I think you 
you'll like this as well the the dramatization is really cool the costume design is great those battles man oh, oh. those those were fantastic also oh. the fucking uh. no you're good all right the the absolute audacity of some of these individuals in right. the show right alexander's mama is completely out of pocket uh right. there was no pocket to be had with that lady uh what you call it uh also shout out shout out to shout out to darius and his hair care routine mm -hmm. all throughout that man's hair was immaculate and the dude who played alexander had like the prettiest blue eyes i'd ever seen in my life yeah like waver would totally simp for that man i i can see it it was it was great i enjoyed it a lot uh the other things i watched with the boys i watched with both brian and tony we checked out feud which we reacted to actually last week uh in trailer talk and we checked oh yeah and we finally got the round to something that i've been telling the boys about for a while we watched the first two episodes of elena of avalor so fellas what do you think of feud let's start with Feud, then we'll go to elena oh boy yo the mess the mess dude the tea was scalding seriously Whew. These these rich old white bitches are petty as fuck. So petty. I love it. Oh yeah. And they've got like Hollywood, the current Hollywood like royalty to play. Yeah, and I mean, they got like the best like I this, I don't want this to sound disrespectful, but they got the best gilf actress ever, Jessica Lange, to play uh Truman Capote's mom and that scene, holy shit. Oh. Oh my god. God. It, just like mm -hmm. Diane Lane, Chloe Sevigny. Oh, dude. Melissa Flockhart. Dude, fucking, fucking Diane Lane, man. Diane Lane yeah. killed it. Good job, was Mrs. It, Kent. Was it Debbie Moore? Debbie Moore wasn't it for a bit. Yeah. No spoilers, uh, but for a bit. Oh. Uh, yeah. An excellent performance, by the way. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's always good to see Debbie Moore in things. Indeed. But yeah. So. Feud was awesome. We will continue to watch Feud. That, that's in permanently and, in the homie queue. And hopefully we can cover it. And that, I don't know how we are, but we're going to give it our good college try. Yep. Uh, so now let's talk about Elena of Avalor. So I've, I've been talking this show up for a while now. Yes, it's a kid show. Yes, it's a Disney princess action show. But once we get further into the seasons, this shit goes hard as fuck. So, so uh, Brian and Tony, what did you think of Elena of Avalor, the first two episodes? episodes fuck you esteban you weak bitch i agree oh yeah i agree wholeheartedly esteban needs to Done. fucking chill apparently this isn't him at his worst it's not well uh, i don't care if he becomes like a, a reptile man i still hate the bastard yeah no esteban sucks i'm with you on that one uh yeah indeed uh but yeah so i'll pass it on i'll pass it on to you guys so brian what else have you consumed in between podcast episodes well first of all lena of avalor i didn't get to say my two cents i liked it, it it's clearly a kid show especially the second episode but it's good and i can see the potential oh yeah um going on to something completely different that is totally not for kids i watched the latest episode of uh dirty laundry which is that uh show where comedians come on and uh they try to guess whose dirty secret is whose in like a round table thing mm -hmm. and this time it was a special episode um because it had uh, members of a podcast called the BCC Club, okay. which, which is a uh, comedy club podcast where these two, two comedians just like whatever they feel like researching that day, weird part of the internet, they research and talk about it. Oh, cool. And one of those two, you might actually know, Jay, uh, old school Viner, Sarah Shower. Oh, I remember Sarah Shower. Well, they were, they're on that podcast and they're on this episode of Dirty Laundry. And when I say it's special, literally the second secret of the night who got kicked out of a nightclub for going down on someone in the club good for them whoever was whoever it was clearly nobody here would be jealous about that clearly look man you know after had the right idea i think yeah um and the big one that the uh, episode is named after is who sent a mean email to a famous comedian as a middle schooler Oh, oh, the, oh that's God. hilarious. And another very special one that I want to point out is who shotgunned a glass beer? Bruh. Jesus. Yeah, because y'all know what shot 
shotgunning is, right? Of course. Do you do it in one go? No. The um, shotgunning is when you poke a hole at the bottom and then you open it up at the top. I feel like that's called something else. No, it no, is that, shotgunning. Oh, that is shotgunning. Oh, I thought I, 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 I thought I thought shotgunning was just taking it all taking it all down in one go. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. You do that and the whole bottle uh, hole and tank. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Because but like, yeah. you can't stop when you saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes exactly. sense. See, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. They did it with a glass bottle. Uh, they had to use a power tool to drill into it. Okay, that seems extra, but do you, I guess. Okay, well, see, I'm going to be seeing well, this also, guy. Also, if you're doing it real fast, there's kind of something else that you got to think about. What? The glass? Oh yeah. From yeah. Into it. Oh yeah, the glass is going to fall into the mm -hmm. I won't completely spoil this the story, but let's just say an ER visit was involved. Well, yeah, no oh, shit. Good. Jesus. So, we're going to be seeing them again next week podcast, I guess. See. Right? <laughs> I mean, no, clearly they survived long enough to be able to tell the story, so they sh they're they fine, whoever it was. Yeah, because the whole entire thing about this show is when you agree to it, you, because I recently learned, like, some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. Apparently, you just give the producers, like, eight or so stories from your life that have happened at previous points in your life, and then the producers come up with catchy titles for them. And will randomly assort them pick what they think are the juiciest nice. or best huh? for camera. Nice. <laughs> Hilarious. And then beyond that, I was going to mention one other thing, but I forgot. Um, As a follow up to uh, last week where I talked about how uh, Quentin Reviews was on uh, Smosh doing their Reddit thing. Mm hmm. He also appeared on their Smosh Games video. Nice. And it was to play a very old forgotten game. Guess who? Nickelodeon edition. I remember hearing him I remember him saying that. And there there was somebody from Nickelodeon there, wasn't it? Uh his his partner, because it was 2v2, mm -hmm. his partner was uh Damien Haas. Nice. Who was on like Shaking Up, I think. Or, or he was on one of the ones with Demi. We talked about it last time. Oh, yeah. So random. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's also, uh, for fun fact, he's also Lord Kudo in My Happy Marriage and Homeboy from uh, Delicious and Dungeon. We forgot to watch the new episode last week. Yeah. But anyway, the last thing that I want to mention is a show that I am currently watching. I wanted to finish it before time, but just... Life got in the way and stuff, but, uh, the brother's son. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you've been talking about it. Off camera. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know, I'm just saying, to us. Holy shit. If we didn't have such a, like, jam schedule, I would have suggested it for the show. It's Michelle Yao is in it, and she is, like, a badass, but in a completely new way, I don't think I've ever seen her. I mean, I'll watch anything with Michelle Yao in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this... Question though, does for... she does she throw hands? No, but she's Aww. a different kind of badass. Well, I mean, yeah, I know you said that, but I was still hoping she was gonna throw hands because it's Michelle Yao. Oh well. This show is interesting because it's like a mix of genres because it's there is action in it, but it's also drama and a little thriller y. And for those that don't know, for the general population, the premise of this show is about a triad a triad prince when his family is threatened, goes from China to uh, L.A. to go protect his mom and his brother who has had no connection to the triad life at all and try to help them. But then things spiral from there. The story gets a lot bigger, and I don't know where the story is going to end, honestly. Interesting. And it kind of reminds me of... I forgot the show now, but I remember, like, I think it was in season one, Jay, we were talking about a show where we mentioned how they were going a lot faster than normal shows do, and, like, things that we expected in, like, the finale they were doing in episode four. I know you, that definitely sounds like something we talked about. I can't lock on to the show. Might have been, like, might have been, like, Lupin? That, that sounds Maybe. familiar. Maybe. But uh, this show is in that similar vein where they're doing stuff that I would have expected normal shows to, like, take, like, multiple seasons to do what they've done in just one. Yeah. Nice. It It's crazy. Combination of good established Chinese actors and newcomers. And it's got... Giving me like slightly similar vibes to um uh, to Bloodhounds, but also not really cool. Cool. 
I don't, I'm trying to skirt around it because I don't know how to explain it without spoiling it and I don't want to spoil it. Understandable. But it's really good and a lot of the characters are very uh, morally gray. Nice. Like, there's no, like, clear... Good guy or bad one. guy? Yep. I like, the, I like yeah. those kind of stories. Oh, yeah. Uh, we definitely need to do a watch along sometime. For sure. I'll put I'll put but it on the queue. I'll let you know next time how it ends, or if it ends on the same note, because I'm not going to spoil it. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Cool, cool, cool. But anyway, that's it for me. All right, Tony. Uh, mm. besides the, besides the stuff we watched together, uh, what 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 have you consumed in between uh podcasts? And if you're going to talk about Crusaders Kings three, remember keep it abridged. This is your this is you who's editing. All right. I will make this short. Two separate uh, YouTube series that I found from different YouTube channels. I think it's Pluto that does uh, the House Cray. Uh, Custom House Crusader Kings 3, a Game of Thrones mod. It is a wonderful uh, little tale of a, the beginnings of a new house in the Westerlands about a young knight that became the head of a house and finding out who murdered his father while trying to build up his own house's legacy and the other is another uh crusader kings 3 a game of thrones mod but focusing on a bastard targaryen who was the bastard son of Ares the mad king who would later take on the surname of dusk fire because he was given the lands of duskendale will this bastard targaryen this amber dragon live on to continue the legacy of the great kings of westeros who knows? Only time will tell. But another thing I have enjoyed recently is the RE4 remake DLC story, A Separate Ways, where you play as Ada Wong. Ada, in Ada. RE4. Uh, Ada doing Ada things. It is Ada doing Ada things. But just for clarification, RE stands for Resident Evil for the folks at home. So is Pretty. the whole DLC just Ada Blue Ball and Leon the whole game? No. She basically so she does blue ball Leon does, a lot though. She does, but she her the whole focus of separate ways is her doing things in the background of the main story with her whole plot. Not wanting to spoil that. Hmm. So we're seeing things from her perspective at the points where Leon ran into her. Do you get her rocket uh, launcher? Well, I'm working towards that because that costs an arm and a leg, man. I mean, naturally. And much like. In RE4 Remake, if you're not careful, you're going to run out of ammunition, especially when you have to fight the big fuckers. Yeah, I uh, I listened to Tony play earlier today, and uh, he was not having a fun time. No. Well, he was having a fun time, but it was challenge. Yep, and I liked the challenge. Fuck you, you giant centipede bastard. But yeah, so uh, last but certainly not least... David, uh, what uh, what are some stuff that you've been checking out that you'd like to highlight on the podcast? Oh, I thought we skipped this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, well, so Netflix out of the quest to become what guy <laughs> because of that members, yeah. But I've been taking my time with free run. Nice, nice. Yes, right. we we, we love we love free run up here. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I I just got done to episode thirteen, and while I'm talking about a little that that little um demon cat that demon town off that just went through uh yeah that, that that was cool that was cool yeah and well i honestly surprised that they still had action i mean i thought it'd be more late are you kidding I'm... me this show's actually going crazy did you not see when they fought the when when uh i wasn't even really early on when the the, the seal was broken on the one guy yes yes uh, yeah. i i saw that i just said uh, I, I, I did think I did come here thinking I would get this small hands and wand throwing. I mean, I was supposed to wand throwing, but not you know wand and hands and some dragon ball pow, pow beam struggle. <gasps> Yo, there's pow. a there's a lot of beam struggles in this show, bro. It go it goes it's, hard. Yeah, dude, you have you haven't seen anything yet with the amount of craziness that this show can do. Also. Also, don't underestimate my boy Stark. Oh, no. no, we, no. I don't. He once saw a dragon. We stand he, Stark yeah, in this house. Yes. Yeah. That kid deserves the world, man. Right. Um, I Fer, th- Fern needs to stop uh, stop brushing him off. <laughs> so small. What is small about him? Exactly. Mm-hmm. You leave my man alone. Um, he has confidence issues. Right. And I saw, like, some clips on YouTube. Saw 
I'm like, is a wizard battle of out arc in this? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be self-destroyed, dude. Now immortal doom with these characters. Nah, this 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 show this show go this show goes crazy. Cause not only does it deal with like the existential stuff of the perception of time and you know how to spend your time, but also natural DD high flying adventure shenanigans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, so you want tech you so you want hunter hunter level of chess play plus um hands yeah free free supplies supplies that come out, out coming in with that. All, all, also all, also a cute also a cute wizard with purple hair and big and uh, pretty decent sized titties. Pretty decent sized titties. She's just Marcin Jay. Never gonna see her all the time. Oh not all the time. She also she also mm. looks like uh she also looks like Asagami Fujino from Karno Kyokai. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I would think more sock I think more like a soccer face, but yeah, that's I mean, also I mean Fujino Fujino's the original soccer. Fujino no, came first. No, she's a bit just sad puppet hair girl go sad puppet hair girl. Yeah, that's mm. what I'm saying. She's the original Sakura. Fujino walks if Sakura could run. Fujino came first. And so I'm now on the other side of uh, anime. Honestly, that ball I've been watching. Um, Under Unlock is a, in, in, in the other table around. I didn't think it would be so deep. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay, not deep, but, you know, like, it's like having a lot of concept. Oh, yeah. Under Unlock is crazy. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm watching all of those. I, I'm also checking out the Egghead arc on One Piece. I'm actually covering that regularly on my TikTok. So if you want to see my reviews of that, go 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 follow me on TikTok. Shameless plug mm. is not shameless. Yeah, I'm still behind the anime, but cast us the manga. Um, one day I am cut up to the manga was well, manga so low leveling. Is that but finally out? Still not uh, the main st character. Still haven't watched that yet. Yeah. Oh damn. Oh oh darn. Uh, I guess I gotta fight you when episode four come out. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So the so the dog finally came out, and the main character voiced by Luke from Street Fighter Six. Oh the shit, MC Luke. Yeah. Nice. So, so this is, I'm at Street Fighter, not at more crap. No, Sorry. you said Street yeah. Fighter. You were right. Street okay. Fighter Six. Right. Master for Master of Muscle and the and the new Patagia voice for Persona Three Reloaded. I forgot he voiced Marshall. Yeah, I know. Two different characters, right? Oh shit. I mean, they both throw hands. Throw hands. <laughs> yes. Only if they one just like yeah, all right. Like, come on, give me some of you got. TikTok dance. TikTok dance. Fortnite dance. Oh man. Rip, rip. Bit yeah. Melinda, bit Zuma Andy for Melinda character. Tony, uh, <laughs> Tony actually just got into Mashal with, uh, like, within the, uh, like a few weeks ago. Yeah, he's really oh, enjoying cool. it. You finished season one, and you're up to two. Season or... one, he hasn't gotten to season okay. two yet. Yeah, I, so I'm about to start season two, actually. Nice. Okay, so I haven't, start... I haven't started season two. I need to start season two. All right. So when do you start finding Mashal to be fun? Because how slow it began for me. Actually, just decided to. I got really into the humor just right off the bat oh, because okay. it, i followed it in the same mentality like i love one punch man it, it is just hard one it yeah. just got the history yeah, yeah. It, 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 yeah it's harry potter one punch man that, that's how i always yeah. explained it <laughs> so, i mean i mean the author is not a bigot so yeah we don't know that yet guys well <laughs> you know we just end this so the <laughs> bigotry might come out of nowhere <laughs> you know what you're not wrong you're not wrong <laughs> uh but yeah Okay, cool. Uh, so, uh, with screen time out of the way, it's time for Trailer Talk. Trailer Talk is the segment where our boy Brian has curated a list of six, count them, six trailers for us to react to, and he will leave a link down below in the description for the YouTube people to check out that playlist so you can react to them yourselves. But Brian, tell the lovely folks at home what trailers we'll be reacting to tonight. First of all, I just want to let you know about one big trailer that I'm not including. Again, like Avatar, because don't think these guys would like it. And that is, they released a trailer for Blood and Honey 2. Nah, I'm uh, good. Yep, the Winnie the Pooh horror. God damn it. But what we are reacting to is one horror movie, which looks like generic, but I included it for one specific reason. Is it the one with the teddy bear? No. Oh, okay. Because I've seen that trailer. You know what I'm this talking about? It was called, called like Chauncey or whatever. The one with the bad Rian kid. No, yeah, we already saw. That one. We saw that <laughs> one. Yep, that but, that that one was intense. I want to see that yeah. shit. Uh huh. This one is called Tarot. Okay. Oh. It's about a, it's about a bunch of kids, teens that get their uh, tarot read. Uh huh. 
and then they all start dying similar to their tarot reading. Interesting. So like a Final but Destination main, style thing? Looks like. But the main reason why I included it is because one of these teens is our girl Karen from the uh, Mean Girls remake. Nice! Really? I love Karen! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We love that and dumb then, bitch. And we mean and we say dumb bitch with all the love in the world. And yeah. then the, the next trailer is something called Long Legs. Can't relate. It's a it's a uh, horror thriller about an FBI agent who is in charge of investigating this cold case that ends up having a personal connection to her and also a pop possible occult connection. Ooh. And the main FBI agent is the lead chick from It Follows. Oh, oh. cool. Oh, I to see her in another horror film again. That's great. I loved It Follows. And the cherry on top here, guys. The serial killer, Nicolas Cage. Oh, oh. shit! Yeah. Hell Let's yeah! Go. Let's go! Um, I'm gonna stick K. I finally got on by daylight, so I'm gonna do a C. Uh, next <laughs> stage. Then, then uh, this is a Canadian show, but it looks interesting. It's called Allegiance. It, it looks like it's um, a ser more serious version of uh, Hot Fuzz, where it's about this young, great upstart who is forced to work at this smaller town. Mm -hmm. And the upstart is uh, played by uh, Movie Thalia from Percy Jackson movies. Huh. Good for her, I guess. And the uh, the captain of the new area that she's in is uh, the dad from Veronica Mars. Oh, cool! Love that guy. Mm. Then next up, we have a uh, Netflix uh, K drama. Nice. Uh, called House of Ninjas. Ooh. It's about a House of the Ninjas. Plot, the plot online was very vague, but it looks like a long line of family ninjas have left the family business, but now have to come back because of things happening. One last ride. Basically. Then uh, a new show coming to Max called The Regime, where it's about the regime of a uh, fictional Middle Eastern, no, uh, Mi European, sorry, European country where uh everything like basically falls to shit within a year oh damn and and uh the cast includes kate winslet and hugh grant oh dang big names mm -hmm. and then the last one because i saved this one for last manhunt it's from the uh it's from the the uh network that has been like a surprise hit lately apple tv nice who's in it i, I forget apple's have the stream is Mon oh, yeah. 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 Monarch, fucking fantastic. Oh, Ted yeah. Lasso, fucking fantastic. Uh that one show Seto recommended to me, the 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 quest, the the gamer quest, whatever the fuck that was called. Mythic Quest, there it is. That was fucking good. Yeah. This one stars um Edmer Tolley from Game of Thrones. Huh. Oh. But this is very special because this the namesake manhunt is a is because the show is about the manhunt for a very specific killer. Oh. Someone you may have heard of. Zo uh, the Zodiac? Nope. F more back than that. Mr. John Wilkes Booth. Whoa! I've actually read about the search for Booth. That's some interesting shit. He, his... Can you put me in history class right now and explain? The killer? Do you don't know who John Wilkes Booth is? No, I never heard of him. Yes, you have. He shot Abraham Lincoln in the back of the head and forks Oh, Stoner. that guy. Oh, that. Oh, yes. the Link oh, 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 oh. I, <laughs> I, I didn't know his name. I didn't know. Oh, the Lincoln Assassin. I, the, John. The, 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 who got yes, John, by Lincoln. John Wilkes Booth. Yes, the actor who shot yes. Abraham Lincoln in, in the back of in the back of the head in his box at Ford's Theater. Yes, that man. Right. And uh, the main character that Tully is playing is uh, Edwin Stanton. Oh shit! Stanton is st so fun fact about Edwin Stanton. Man, I, and I, <laughs> what a, what a fun coincidence because I just taught I just taught history today. Fun fact about Edwin Stanton. Uh, he uh, thanks to his efforts and eventual catching of Booth, uh, he ends up founding what becomes the precursor to the modern-day Secret Service. Nice. And the show is filled with a bunch of familiar faces, but the only one that I will note right now mm -hmm. is uh, playing his son, 
because this is a callback to the show. Justin from 13 Reasons Why. Nice! Good for him. I like that actor. Yep. All right. And even when the show was shit, he was doing a great job. He was. He was. But yeah. All right. I'm looking forward to those trailers. Well, we will be back shortly. Thanks to the magic of editing. Thank you again, future Tony. But until then, please enjoy this word from our non-existent sponsors. And we're back. All right. Solid bunch of trailers there, Brian. Uh, the the uh, the only one that, that I thought was cool, but like a little underwhelming was the, the cop one, Allegiance. Yeah. Just kind of felt like your standard cop drama. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Like, nothing wrong with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, did not did, did not match the description you gave us at all. That's the problem with covering stuff that uh, you have little information on. No, that's fair. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so um, th- th- well, personally, th- uh, uh-huh. one trailer that I found very fascinating was just the eeriness of long legs. You long- know, yeah, long legs looks very interesting. I mean, the atmosphere alone just electric. I oh, yeah. am okay. very curious to see. Although we did not technically see good old Nicky Boy, his presence was felt. For but sure, see, that shit, you know, mm-hmm. wild. Oh no, Brian, he gone. Wait, what? Brian died? Yeah, he's not here. Look at the, look at the call. Brian? Brian? Brian! Oh no, he really did disappear. <laughs> and, and he's back. Oh, uh, keep that <laughs> in. Go, keep Jay, it. you did the beer juke method. Keep that in. Keep that in, Tony. Keep that in. Uh, I, that solid snake joke was hilarious. Welcome back, Brian. Oh, may- maybe he's not back. Oh no. Did, did, did we summon Brian's ghost? The sword was fucking up on me. Okay, we Ooh. did we did not summon Brian's ghost. I was scared. I thought we were in, I thought we were in that tarot movie, and Brian's ghost has come to kill us across the internet. Well, you did say he may be time. I, yeah, it, it, yeah, I know. That's why I was scared for a second because it was like. But that's a totally different franchise, there, Jay. I don't know, man. For, them. Hey, man. For all I for yeah. all I know, Brian could have turned into the Candyman in the last five seconds. Oh come on, so you know he did blame Mary, blame Mary in school. Uh, I did comfort in my own home. I did. I I also did. <laughs> You insane? I also did it in the comfort of my own home, and me and my sister ran away like pussies after the second one. I did that shit by myself. Boy, okay, anyway, I to about that. Uh, anyways, but yeah, Taro. It looked like something that like we we'll probably throw it on, on like Halloween, but like we're not gonna. I don't think we're gonna go out of our way to watch. Yeah, you know, it kind of gave me the vibe of all when uh we had the era of like lindsay hale horror movies that came oh, I, I think you combined lucy lindsay hale. i, I would say you combined lindsay lohan and lucy hale because of, i guess because of mean girls but lucy hale lucy hale was in a lot of shitty horror movies that's true like one based on hide and seek she was also was she in the the one with the light as a feather true. stiff as a board i don't think so but she was in truth or dare yep yep Oh, okay. So I, now, now, now I know her. Now, now, now I know her. She's an Australian girl. No, she's not Australian. She's she's the sh- she's the short little white girl with big eyes and brown hair that was on Pretty Little Liars. She's Don't like mind. literally she's five foot. Funny. Yep. But anyway, Taro seems all right. If I watch it, it's for Karen. Yeah, we love Karen. Karen was hilarious in uh, movie Mean Girls. But I think other than those two trailers, everything else was pretty solid. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, House of Ninjas looks fucking sick. Although Brian did pull a little bit of a wasis. It's a J drama. My bad. My bad. I, I just saw. I just saw. That he just Yvonne... saw. He just saw Netflix and Asian people and was like, "Oh, it's a K drama." You should know what Japanese sounds like, bro. I don't watch the trailers beforehand. But also, you should Ooh. know that ninjas are a Japanese thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was my. That part was my bad. But anyway, yeah. the the show looks good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my whole like, wait, can you draw my bad ninja? That seems kind of oh, okay, you know, in Korea. Why not? I mean, yeah, I was like, well, well, I was like, yeah, the Japanese don't have any, have like, you know, copyright on ninjas. Maybe it is a K drama about ninjas. They start speaking right. Japanese. Anyway, right. the actual, the actual show itself looks promising it does oh, yeah the yeah, a- the action is cool uh i always i always like the like out of the life but forced back in for one last go type of storylines and yeah. you know it's, it's it's definitely cliche as hell they quit the life because the, the son and the family died uh oh no 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 
from what I can understand, just kind of inferring, mm -hmm. just for information, this is the Fuma clan, gentlemen. Oh, did they mention? Did they mention their surname? If it's the Fuma clan, holy shit! Wait, wait, yeah. you saw our clan logos and you recognize how, how you got there? Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, where'd you? Uh, yeah, how? So, so, so. I read, the, I read the subtitles. Okay. And what subtitle said, "The Fuma clan shall rise again." Oh shit! They're part of the Fuma. Okay, so for anybody who doesn't know your Japanese history, I thought I was gonna talk about American history today. Anyone who doesn't know your Japanese <laughs> history, the Fuma clan or a fame the most famous clan of ninjas in all of Japan uh, that were active during the war and stage period and even earlier during the Genpei War. Um, uh, some of the most and famous they... ninjas in the Fuma clan are uh, Koto Danzo and Fuma Kotaro. Yep. Or, oh, it, or, 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 or if you remember, or if you play Fate Grand Order, you may know them as Robot Milf and Hentai protagonist. Ah. Yep. But for, <laughs> but for the sake of those two individuals in particular, specifically uh, Kotaro, he was predominantly around during uh, the Sengoku period. Yep. Where he was more notable for a lot of the espionage tactics around Nobunaga's machinations. Yep. It's crazy. Fuma Kotaro is right up there with Sarutobi Sasuke as one of the most famous ninja in all of Japanese history. Mm -hmm. Oh, we cannot forget another famous uh, ninja warrior. Naruto? Be... No, Goemon. Oh yeah, Goemon! Goemon's dope. That movie was awesome. Yeah. Goemon is technically a ninja. Yeah. Bandit, but a ninja all the same. Yeah, same classification. He's a thief. You d d is stealthy. D does all the flips and stuff but yeah Just had to put that out there you know but yeah it looks cool i i definitely think if we got room for it we're gonna add it to the list yeah, yeah. I, um also might be on the list depending on things regime that looks fun it looks fun like yeah it does caitlin did, i've never seen like you said in the uh when we were react to it i've never seen caitlin plays a character that's so weird yeah she's usually like drama like uh titanic and well, yeah all that but this looks like one of those like offbeat com it reminds me of like veep it's like a kind of it's like a, it's because it seems like a you know political comedy kind of thing and honestly i'm here for political comedy and turmoil that it that doesn't isn't actually happening in real life yeah oh yeah indeed but speaking about political stuff that happened in real life oh man so uh, manhunt. manhunt looks cool i only have one beef oh here we go again why the fuck did you get it wrong he look man it's in every single freaking history book he did not say freedom for the south he said sick sempa tyrannus and shot the man in the back of the head. It's a fa it's a famous mm -hmm. quote. It's actually, unfortunately, <laughs> the 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 state slogan for Virginia. God damn it. Um. Yeah. And uh. <laughs> yeah. So it's important. All right. You get included. I hope that that was just a trailer bit and he says the real thing in the real show but overall it looks dope and i want to watch it indeed you were also a little peeved that they quote unquote spoiled it they technically did because like i mean it's not a spoiler that he dies because you know it's history but they showed the death scene in the trailer the bar and it was on fire and everything it was crazy like we're, we're just gonna show the end in the trailer okay jack uh, this is my basic middle school high school history we all read the book we read the book we read this uh, uh, appar apparently not uh, apparently did no one read it enough to know the actual fucking phrase just saying uh look well, but hey uh speaking about look i have burning in fire i happen i happen to really like american history folks right i i apologize uh like especially like the civil war era stuff especially because of where i live i know a lot about this shit so uh you know it's cool it's close to home um one thing i only want for it is a it just cast a claim to make a camera now that's all i want, I want classic I, oh i i, I will camera. i will mention something that david said that is very true they should have just waited a month oh my <laughs> god Can we saw lincoln death yeah we looked up we looked up the date of lincoln's actual assassination so the show comes out on march 15th he got shot on april 15th could have just and like i said mm -hmm. did i not say y'all are out of pocket for wanting that <laughs> It yeah, 200 plus it, it's, it's out of pocket, but, but like, come on, it's, it's good marketing. I know. Oh, yeah. 
I see the marketing side of it, but it's like, god damn, look, bro. He's a, look, he's a beloved, he's a beloved person, we know, but they, they put out, they put out that 11-22-63 show on 11-22, so, hmm. take that. Oh, real quick, side note, oh, uh, Jay. Hmm. I meant to mention this to you off camera, but uh, they're giving a, a documentary to uh, to a uh, what's her face, uh, the w woman that killed Selena. Boo! Fuck that bitch! Yep. And the way that the trailer for the documentary goes, it's like she's finally telling her side of the story. Her side of the story? That crazy bitch just shot her in the. F no, you don't get a fucking story. Fuck you. Come folks down let's talk about the show in question we have tonight shall we sorry sorry yeah sorry that uh, uh, one of my favorite is one of my favorite artists gone too soon so much potential anyways let's talk about the place that that bitch is gonna end up in hell well you think about it, see me go straight to charlie so eventually she might go up to the public gate i, I really i really hope that charlie doesn't let her in the hotel <laughs> it'll really let down the property values but yeah you're right let's talk about has been hotel Okay, so, uh, again, we don't really need a segment talking about, uh, you know, our histories with the show, uh, because Brian and Tony have already talked about it, I've already talked about it, but David, you're new to the podcast, so let us know, what did you think of the pilot of Has Been, and what do you think of the rest of the Hellverse? I saw the very first trailer of Has Been Hotel, like, almost, like, eight years ago. Yep. And my god, the way it's, it, it worth it, it worth it, um, whoo, that, uh, I don't know how to explain this. I uh, know. Uh, well, so you we, we, don't 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 get into the full show yet. I was just asking, like, what did you what did you think of the what did you think of the original pilot, and what and what are your thoughts on like the Hellverse overall? Okay, I love the Hellverse. I um, can't can't wait to see more of it. Um, the original pilot. It really was like a uh, Charlie just felt way out of place in the real pilot in the in the world. See, at like she's a Disney character in like a Adult Swim world, but but now they're just like in the same tent. Yep. Um, I, I, I'm looking for, I'm looking for to like, she has put so much work in this universe. Cut this out, Tony, cut this out, Tony. I'm, ba I'm, I'm rambling, I'm rambling, Tony. Cut it out. Everybody rambles, David. It's fine. Yep. All good, bro. Anyway, moving mm -hmm. on. Uh, so the way we're going to structure the podcast is, uh, you know, going character by character, but the overall through line, because this is a musical, we're going to be talking about our favorite songs. And by the end, we will tell you guys what our favorite songs of the musical are. So let's go character by character. We're going to start with uh, the man, the myth, the legend, best snack inventor himself, Serpentius. And remember, we are in the spoiler free section. Uh, so. Good. Boy, good I, snake. Look, man, I thought he was just going to be a one-off goof antagonist. And, like, he was just going to be, like, kind of like your... To use a Spider-Man example, kind of like Shocker. Yeah, you know Shocker is, like, the is the, the one Spider-Man villain that's just kind of like, Oh, it's you again. All right, punch. Yep, yep just the average bum. Yep. <laughs> but then, like, he actually became a part of the family and turned out to be a really good sweet dude yeah like he's oh yeah and i like when he like as soon as the whole him and cherry bomb thing started up i was like yep i ship it frame one i ship it i thought i the pilot i thought we never go I, I, I didn't think i was gonna see him again but so oh yeah and then when he had that back and forth with alistair i thought oh shit, yeah shit. yeah he's yeah, he, not gonna be yeah. coming back alistair is going to murder him but not charlie was able to calm him down but like I think the uh, the coolest part with uh, with Serpentius, I think that like helps really endear him to me personally, is when Vox and the V's hire him to like infiltrate, and then he gets caught immediately. And then when he mm -hmm. and when he calls Vox, he's like, "Abort, abort! Agent Pentius has been captured." And then Vox is just like, "Serpentius, you got caught? It hasn't even been a day." That shit was hilarious. If they don't kill you, do I it, do it will. yourself. Do it yourself. Uh, oh, Lord. That and was then, that was intense. To see his, like, connection with his eggs. Oh, yeah. Also, we got to give a special shout out to the VIP, the, uh, you know, the legend, Frank. The tier for Frank. Frank, 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 Frank. You will be the greatest ever. Eight found death. And I love that where he was like, wait. 
We have knaves? Oh man, Frank, Frank was playing with his life, man. He, he, he I, I, there were several times where I thought Frank was gonna get scrambled. Ah, uh, but good for him. Yeah, he did get a humpy dumpy moment. For real. I wonder, do those eggs like regenerate? Or when they're broken, are they just dead? I think they're just dead. Damn, sucks for them. Yeah, it definitely sucks for them. Don't put them in the bottom of your grocery bag. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so moving on, since we just talked about Vox, let's talk about the Vs real quick. Cause like they were there, but they don't play as an important of a role this season. I really like them. All their yes and no because all their designs are all their designs are really solid. And when I say I really like them, I mean I, it's a love to hate kind of thing. Just to clarify. Oh yeah, because one of them. I mean, yeah, I so desperately want to beat this. I was gonna say, Brian. Uh, yeah, when I say I like them, I hate Valentino. But like, I I like them because they're villains and they're good, like unapologetic, just. Fucking fuck you, villains. Try to suffer, diva. Surprisingly. Yep. Yep. And also, it was cool to see, like, more and more about, like, what actually his deal is with Angel Dust. Yep. And, and like, oh I man. Fucking Vox totally wants to fuck Alistair. Totally does. Oh, yeah. His, his, like, literal commentary on the final fight. I'm so fucking hard right now. Oh, pelvis throw, pelvis throw, pelvis throw, pelvis throw, pelvis throw. Yeah, no, he, he wants to fuck Alistair so bad. Uh, and then... Velvet is kind of just there. Yeah, yeah, but boy, did she have bars. She did! When she when she tried to call out Car uh, Carmilla, yeah, that was that was pretty dope. Um, So yeah, they're pretty cool. Uh, a lot of the other, like, smaller characters that we got to see glimpses of in this first season were really dope. And, you know... Became pretty endearing pretty fast. I love Rosie. Damn, yeah. Rosie's really cool. Uh, I love her, like, other mother Coraline-esque look. I also love that she's, like, actually a very wholesome character who was able to give Charlie some really needed advice at a crucial point in her life. Oh, yeah, indeed. Because, like, just like, how is this cannibal so wholesome? It's... Look, it, I'm too fail. You'd be a really good person. But, you know, cannibalism... I want to take it hell. Yeah. It makes sense why she's so ideal. Yeah, no, that's fair. And I mean, you know, the hell verse is kind of notable for like, yeah, you know, you're in hell, but the hell can still have some of the most wholesome people ever. See Millie and Moxie, you know, uh, like Stolas and Octavia, even though, you know, oh, yeah. Stolas is kind of spiraling right now. Uh, but, uh, um, I, uh, speaking about overlords, yep. wish we had gotten into more of the other ones, like the, uh, the, the spider overlord, who, uh, if you go back and you notice, when they're just walking around, everyone is just, like, going the other way and completely freaked out. Yep. Oh, yeah, that ain't no southern, that ain't no small hand, that just is, like, up in your face about how terrified he is. Yep. He's a yep. man that oh. the man respect every time he walked down the street. I also want to know more about the uh, the giant like the... crocodile. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was to say, is there, yeah, I was like, is it the alligator or a crocodile? I couldn't really, I didn't really get a good look, good enough look Which, to identify. Um, I was telling Jay about this off camera, but uh, people speculate that uh, she runs a bar that you see in the background that is literally a kaiju bar. Nice. That would be cool as hell. But yeah, uh, so like the world itself is really interesting. We actually got more full lore in uh, in this, like about Lilith and Lucifer and the founding of hell. Uh, so so that was cool. Yeah, with with Hell of Ball, we get like the demons, but in Husband, we get the sinner and heaven. So like, okay, good. This is honestly expanding on something we didn't see yet. Yep. Very, very exciting uh, to, to hear yeah, more about the, the lore. the only look of heaven that we saw in the... Sorry, the only look of heaven that we saw in... Uh... Hell of a boss is the cherubs. Yeah, the cherub episode. Which which is wild because like the cherubs didn't curse at all. But every age every other angel we saw in has been What the fuck? Oh fuck, you're Lucifer's daughter. Oh f take that fuckers. Saint Michael. Saint Michael the, No the Saint, Saint Peter. Saint, Saint Peter. Uh, Saint Peter, the gatekeeper here, to drop a hot f bomb when he found out who she thought who we were talking to. Yep, that was that was funny. Shout, uh, shout out to shout out to Darren Chris. Welcome to heaven. Yeah, but nobody, nobody cussed angel or demon as much as Adam. Oh yeah, he's a. But yeah. I mean, I yeah, we're all we're all related to that fucker. Unfortunately, I heard mm -hmm. everybody's got one. Yeah, I am the. That was all Jack Master. Uh, ew. The entirety of mankind came from these fucking nuts. Oh, fuck that guy. Anyway, we'll get to that. 
Uh, you know what? Swagger. You know what? Speaking of that, well, let's go ahead and talk about it. talk about love to hate. This guy, he is terrible, but God, is he fun to watch? Oh yeah, Dev. Mm-hmm. Like he's such a piece of shit. It, so it makes it so cathartic when like people are beating his ass in the finale. Uh, oh yeah. Only one person had to beat his ass. Okay, yeah, Alistair beat his ass. And oh, and no, 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 two people. I was gonna get ass kicked. No, no, <laughs> Alistair beat his ass a little bit and then got his ass kicked. Then technically, <laughs> it was four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Technically, it's four. So uh, somebody did the cleanup. Somebody did the cleanup, and it was a t- and then it was a duo, both beating his ass at the same time. A father and daughter. Yep. Also. Yep. 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 Are you eating kind of the sis the sif from Charlie? Yes. The thing that that counted. That counted. It counts! Look, she participated, therefore it counts. If you if you if you if you throw a punch while your homie is ju- while your homie is fighting somebody, you are participating in a jumping. It's more of a sneak. Still jumping. Well, also, it was a pretty hell of a blow. Yeah, it's not it, it's not like she tagged them with a little jab. There was some oomph in it. Yep, so much so that she was channeling original Charlie concept. Yep. But uh, speaking of Daddy Dearest, let's go ahead and talk about him. Oh, uh, Bo- Bo- I just want to put on the bleach moment with Adam. Uh huh. What, what bleach moment? Oh shit! We, we broke, need, uh, he broke uh, Alex's uh, fucking cane. Oh 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 yeah! Alistair. Oh yeah! Right. Al- yeah yeah yeah. Alice was like, wait, what the what just happened? Oh fuck! Just so I know for uh, like the time difference, have we jumped into spoilers? We have not. Okay. But we were saying for the, the whole time, so we felt we felt that job guy. Wait, well, no, well, no, 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 I mean, hand, no, hand I mean, no, we didn't say we didn't say any spoilers. We were just talking about a moment. That's not a spoiler. We kind of mentioned spoilers, but which spoiler? Vaguely. I was just saying like, we we didn't mention any. The fight with Adam in the final episode. I mean, Adam is set up to be a bad guy. Of course they're gonna fight. We didn't say who wins, so that's not a spoiler. Oh, yeah. th- oh, they fight the bad guy in the final episode. Big spoiler. Well, carry on. Uh, anyways, let's talk about Daddy Dearest. Ah, uh, Jeremy Jordan, man. Love this guy. Great representation for Jeremy's everywhere. Hail Satan. Oh, yeah. Indeed. Hail Satan, my lord savior. Also, extra points for Satan being a short king. Short kings rise up. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 We're in sync, Tony. Good job. High five. All right. Ha. But I love that they, like, similar to... Netflix is Lucifer. Like, went into, like, all the minutia and, like, different elements of Lucifer. Also, I respect that, like, he they actually show Lucifer as somebody who isn't evil, per se. He just believed in free will. And what's interesting about this Lucifer that is actually very similar to the, the DC Comics Lucifer from Sandman slash Lucifer the TV show. Uh, you got depressed? Yes! Oh, for real? Yeah. The actor had depression. Yeah, it's the whole reason he goes. That, it's the whole reason he goes down to run the nightclub. It's because he wants something to do because he's bored and depressed. Uh, so, so like having that extra layer for Lucifer is is really awesome. It also makes uh like his reconnection with Charlie like that much more sweet. And also, I love that they didn't go the cliche route of him being just a deadbeat, terrible father. We've gotten pr- plenty of terrible dads in the Hellverse so far. Somebody needs to join Blitz and Stolas in the Great Dad Club, or at least Great Dads that are trying their best. Oh yeah, cause he's flawed, but he's trying. Like, I, I love that moment when Charlie calls him. Oh my God, just like... oh my God, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, she's calling me out of the blue for, for no reason. Uh, okay, 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 don't worry. Don't worry, you got this. You got this. It has to be perfect. Hi, hey, Char, Char. No, 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 that's too much. Too much. Charlie, Charlotte. Uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, finally answers. Hey, bitch. <laughs> uh. Also, one of my favorite lines from him. Ha! Take that, depression. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I need. I'm going to fuck you. Oh man, that's that's also one of my favorite lines. Uh, just showing his like hello fellow kids kind of mindset. I'm going to fuck you, Dad. It's it fuck, fuck you up. up. Dad. It's fuck you up. Wait, what did I say? Oh. Yep, and that is totally a move that I would do. Oh, uh, I mean, if you want to fuck Adam, be my guest, Brian. You know, it's a little incesty, but 
Whatever floats your boat. Uh, well, no, no. well, technically with Adam, isn't him going after anybody incesty? Yeah, but he's a nasty creep. <laughs> so Okay, okay, okay. He's a he's a deuce. He's a he's an ape plan, but he, we at least say to him he's not a creep. Yeah, alright, fine, fine. He 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 he's a misogynist. He's just but a yeah, misogynist. Short King Lucifer was great. With the six wings and everything. Oh yeah. Sucking fantastic. Uh I love mm -hmm. the I love the bitter the like the bitter uh kind of not rivalry but like antagonistic relationship between him and Alistair. No, I can <laughs> Who are you again? Ah, I've never heard of you. I guess that's why Charlie named it the Hasbin Hotel. Haha, <laughs> that's clever. Haha, <laughs> no, actually, I came up with it. Haha, <laughs> I guess it's not that clever. Haha, <laughs> fuck you. That was great. Oh, and uh, get off so... of my song. I started it. Well, I'm gonna finish it. Uh, Poor man by himself in his room making rubber ducky after rubber ducky. You know, such an interactor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. friends. Right? I have plenty of them. Right, Mr. Squeaker? <laughs> Hey, at least his rubber duckies are cool as hell, though. They do backflips and freeze fire. They do do cool shit, don't they? I want a rubber ducky that I I, be, I bet I bet you I bet you Ernie would love a rubber ducky that does backflips and breathes fire. Uh huh. Oh yeah, Bert. What? Hmm? No, but who cares about Bert? No one cares about fucking Bert. Bert's God a damn. What Bert did he guys? He's a buzzkill. Nobody likes Bert. Weak as fuck. But anyway, also with that scene where we see the rubber duckies, we also get a little bit of lore that I just absolutely love. Yep. And that was Charlie is a former goth. Yep. And also, like, uh, I I love that like Charlie. I I def I s totally relate to Charlie in this aspect with uh, her relationship with Lucifer. Now my dad my dad isn't the depressed king of hell making rubber duckies, but like because my dad was often on deployment and stuff i really only got to like kind of see him from afar for a lot of my life so like a lot of my like childhood and teen years was like building an image of my dad and then like you know as an adult now that he's retired i've actually like you know gotten to know him as a person which is cool so totally vibe with charlie on that end you gotta be tough for thinking you gotta be tough for charlie if everyone thinking his everyone praising dad be the, the bad motherfucker the bad motherfucker in hell himself and like you know a bit more evil thing they seem to just know like my dad just a goof goof fit failure right uh but yeah i i think their relationship is super cute uh, i enjoyed it more, Indeed. more than anything is definitely up there for me as one of the as one of the songs. Oh yeah, I oh, agree with that. Oh, I will say, uh, just as prep for uh, when we get to the uh, ranking your favorite songs, uh, ties are not allowed. However, you can say you can have a tie if the song has a reprise. So you can include the song and its reprise as a one as a single spot. All right. So let's talk about the other hotel guest real quick before we jump into spoilers. Ah, uh, first let's talk about Nifty. Not much to say about Nifty, but like a global horse to be voiced by Iron Mouse. She's yeah, she should honestly should be Iron Mouse. Ma Iron Mouse matches the energy, but Kimiko Glenn is fucking great. Which it's so weird because she has such like different but chaotic characters. Fucking the female or again Kimiko. No. Oh uh, no, she's she's the one. No, no, she's the one who played So So in Orange Is the New Black and uh, Penny yep. Parker. Never mind. Think, I was thinking yep. of the wrong actress. You were thinking of uh, Karen Fuka. Yeah, Car Car Karen. Or? Yeah, Car Karen Fuka. Uh, Karen Fuka. Not uh, Fukawara. Yeah, that's who I was thinking. No, this of. this is Kimiko Glenn. Because if you go back and you watch uh, Spider Verse, she is a little bit chaotic. Yep. I mean, every character she's played is a little is a little chaotic. You know, uh, all the way back to Knife Chow. Is that other thing in her contract? Like, they had to be unhinged. Maybe. Uh. I mean, m m m maybe maybe it's just typecasting. We, we, we need we didn't we need we need an unhit we need an unhinged tiny girl. Call Quick. Kimiko. Find the unhinged tiny girl. Calls Kimiko. Oh, this one's an actual demon. Sweet. All right. Cool. Uh, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> what little we know about Nifty, if we ever find out her backstory, it's probably gonna kill us. It's gonna be real sad. I have a th I, my theory is still standing that she was like a a failed Shirley Temple type actress. Uh, You're gonna kill us? Huh. Will make us feel gross. Uh, and then like uh, I I think like she ki she killed she killed somebody. Try, tried to cl tried to clean up the evidence and then turned it into a uh um you know murder unalive. Mm. Oh my oh. god! Wait, okay, um, wait, stupid idea for a theory. Okay. Yeah. The OCD drama throw. 
<laughs> it's, 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 it's just kill people because he thought they were dirty in hell. I mean, could also be a thing. That that that's definitely like a that seems like a, that sounds like a serial killer modus operandi for sure. The uh, the common fan theory for her is that she is a fifties housewife who caught her husband cheating. I don't. See, the one thing that I don't, the one thing that stops me from believing the housewife thing is that she's clearly, ever, in all the characterization and how everyone refers to her, she's a child. So, like, I she child with us on Ty. He's three. No offense, Ty. I mean, we're we're all children on the inside, but I, I mean, she's actually like treated like a like a child. Like, people refer to her as like kid and shit. Like Angel Dust wouldn't even let her. Uh, Angel Dust wouldn't let her drink. Do you want that thing? Do you want that little thing on alcohol or on caffeine or both? Red Bull, Red, Red Bull or vodka? She, oh uh, no! Uh huh. No, 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 no. Fair, fair. But still, I. I, I think Angel Dust thing is just that she's not used to drinking. So I don't know. I, I, I just don't. I just don't buy the housewife thing because she just seems like a kid. Like the puppet shows, all this shit. That doesn't seem like you know grown woman shit true but anyway whatever they do decide to do with her i'm excited to see it even though i know it'll hurt oh yeah oh yeah um so uh next we'll we will talk we'll talk about uh husker uh i love husker i love these types of characters the like done with your shit old veteran like and uh him and angel dust relationship is great they have one of the best friendships in the show and, you know, at first I was kind of against Husker Dusk, but then I saw the moment in the finale, that little, little quick, little, little something, something. I'm like, okay, I see it now. Oh, yeah. And I mean, also voiced by Keith David. Yeah, Spawn is back, baby. The bigger taste from the pilot. <laughs> Yo. Well, the whole cast was, was recast. Yo, I mean, my, in my voice in voice a while, like, yeah, Husker like deep in this series, Husk was oh, not yeah. this, this deep in the pilot. Yep, yep, that is true. Uh, but yeah, no, he's great, love him. All right, last but certainly not least, because we can't really talk about Vaggy with talk without talking about spoilers, so we're gonna skip Vaggy in the spoiler free section. But Vaggy's great, Stephanie Beatrice. What you got against the uh, girl, dude? No, I love Vagina. Are you kidding me? Uh, I'm, I, that's the one thing I agree with uh, Adam, you know? Well, um, Maybe I got it from him. Are you also going to talk about our boy? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I said. Last but certainly not least, we're talking about Angel Dust. Oh, I thought the main girl was last. My bad. No, no, no. Char Charlie, we technically can't even talk, can't talk about without spoilers either. And we kind of already talked about Charlie. Uh, okay, Angel Dust. All right, let me get the line up. Oh. Harder, Dad. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, oh God! God. Uh, harder, Daddy. Uh, I had to do it. I had to do oh, it at God. least I'm once. Angel in the mail. Stop making a line. Had, I had to do it. I had to do it at least once. I love Angel Dust. I mean, no surprise. Yeah. No surprise here. I love Angel Dust, but like, he's fun. He's fun. Like, I knew from Jump that he was more than just a walking sex jokes factory. The sex jokes were hilarious, though. But he was he, he was made way more than that. And like the depth to that and the amount of trauma, oh boy, man. And oh yeah. And the song they said it to, Poison, wow. Mm -hmm. Indeed. That's like one of the ones that is up there for me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Same. Uh, I can't wait to see more of his family because uh, obviously we got to see a little bit of Tony's backstory there. Huh? His name is Anthony, Not remember? Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Uh... Oh yeah, I thought about this fun fact. Okay. Um, and you got sister seeing happen right now. Yeah, Brian. T Brian mentioned that off camera. Oh, you could see. Apparently, you can see her in the background of. Look, I know, and, I know, I know he's a fire hole, but then he's getting whole hole in his afterlife, right? I mean, apparently she wasn't really involved in the mobster life, so she got to go to heaven. She got to be welcome to heaven. I'm gonna keep doing that. Yep. Also, apparently, at one point, we can see the back of the head of his brother, who is possibly going to be part of the hotel next season. Yep, so that'll be interesting. Uh, but yeah, so that's Angel Dust. Can't talk about Vaggy. Can't talk about Charlie for real without going into spoilers. We talked about Charlie and her relationship with Lucifer. That kind of was the big thing that we could talk about spoiler-free-wise. So Also, there was a uh, another overlord that we didn't mention, but I don't think we can without spoilers. Oh, yeah. Uh, Carmela Carmine. Fantastic design. Very sexy voice. Uh, you know, we'll talk about her in the spoiler section as well. So 
that's it for this. Now we can jump right into the ninth circle, which is spoiler territory. All right, usual countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Spoiler alert, bitches. All right, first, That's let's- what you want, dude. Let's talk about vagina. I always want to talk about vagina. All right, Baggy. Damn, Jay, you talked to me earlier about dead name, and you're just gonna openly do that? I know. You know, I got, I kind of have, I, I have to, I have to, to make the joke. She'll understand. But yes, let's, 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 let's talk, let's talk about, let's talk about Maggie. All right. So to all, to all of the, to, to all of the internet that were, that was like, oh, it was so obvious. She's a fucking angel. No, the fuck it wasn't. Shut up. It wasn't obvious. In hindsight. Yeah. 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 It's obvious in hindsight for sure. But like, it wasn't obvious watching it real time. We're not dumb. Okay. I actually, I, 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 I actually like that we were caught. We were all caught off guard. We were like, oh shit. She's a fucking angel. Oh yeah. That was awesome. Uh, also, she has some amazing numbers and she has like a great like mentor mentee chemistry with uh, Carmilla Carmine. Fucking their song? Uh, <laughs> Out for Love? My goodness. Mm-hmm. Actually, both their songs. Oh yeah, the uh, like the uh, whatever the, it takes. Yeah, whatever it takes. Yeah. Oh, and like kudos for to ha to use that song as foreshadowing to their later connection. Cause we were wondering, like, why the fuck is she in this song with this overlord lady? And then we were thinking, <laughs> and then like, I remember when me and Brad, when me, Brian, and Tony were watching, we were like, huh, they do kind of look similar design-wise. Maybe like they're part of the same species. But uh, we were kind of close. Well, there is also the uh, fan theory that Karma Carmilla is also a former angel. I could see that. I mean, she gets a hold of Angelic Steel all the fucking time. Dude, the angel, the lazy in hell. They just leave that shit lying around hell at the good old fashioned slot. I mean, maybe, but I don't know. Uh, yeah. So that that was a that was a dope twist. I did not see that shit coming. Pause. Uh, and also just Becky and Charlie's relationship is so wholesome i'm really glad that like after the secret came out we did not have to deal with the bullshit of charlie not trusting vaggy for too long because like if it dragged for longer than it did i would have probably been annoyed i'm not gonna lie i could agree oh, yeah. with that it was, well, literally literally it was just one episode yeah it was if a, it was like half an episode yeah it was a regular time because like she still obviously you know charlie had to process it and the entire trip to cannibal town was her like talking out her feelings and then you know yep. it culminated in the conversation with rosie which by the way this side note i love that that, that is such a like thing that i have done and i bet you guys have done oh where yeah it's just like you're venting and you're talking out to somebody and you get so intense in the conversation and then you look up and you're like where the heck are we right that actually that happens to me all the time actually like i i'll i'll i'll, I'll be i'll be i'll be doing something and then it's just, i'll just be like fucking going in and then it's just like wait why the fuck am i here what the fuck was i doing oh fuck if i know oh uh, but yeah so their relationship is super wholesome i love their reprise of more than anything it's fucking beautiful and we finally get to see them kiss mm -hmm. uh -huh. and look i i know they didn't show anything but my personal head can they definitely fucked before the battle uh-huh oh yeah we also at one point get to see them in their uh nighttime where where uh They've got definite bedhead. Yeah. Oh yeah. Huh. Bed. Yeah, same bed. Thing. Bed. Of course. I mean, bedhead probably more than likely happened. Yes. Uh. But. Da -da. But yeah. Uh. There. Mr. Mr. Target, Deborah, Ryan. Try again next time. Ah, uh, whatever, fam. The uh, the uh, the audience likes my jokes. Fuck you. But not you. But, but you know, bringing it back to the topic at hand. Uh huh. I did. I did love that because, like David said, in the pilot, Charlie seemed. Like, little out of place, but in this one, she actually, like, had outbursts that made her seem like part of the thing. 
Yeah. And one of them was when she went off yeah. on the old cannibal lady. Oh, 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 fuck oh, up your head. oh my god, that was my favorite dude. That caught me off guard the first time. I remember when we the three of us were watching it, like where it was just the three of us, and she's like she's trying to give her spiel and she's like, you know, saying, I have a dream and it's just, and the the play just boo, get off the stage. Nobody likes you, nobody cares. And then she just shut the fuck up, you old bitch. Sorry put in the clip oh uh, my clip on the stream like it's weird like <laughs> you, like like you you've heard her say fuck before but you've never heard her say fuck like that she was also flipping her off and going part demon yep shit was intense i love that though she broke, she broke the she broke the technical teacher look she was having on yep Yep, she, she she gave she gave that old lady the look I sometimes want to give my students, but I know better. <laughs> Even to the point where Rosie was like, "Okay, we need to have a talk." Uh, just a short intermission, people. We'll be back in a second. Uh, but yeah, that was great. Um, I love Charlie. Uh, just right from her opening number when they they when they do Happy Day in Hell. And she does the Charlie thing from the original pilot. She's like, wait, where'd she go? But she- no, Oh no, she's singing again. Uh, she said, uh, she already left. Don't tell me she's- Yep, she's dancing. She's singing. This is already halfway down the street. Uh, it's another happy day in hell. <laughs> I love her, man. She's, she's such a fucking cinnamon roll. Like, you don't want anything bad to happen to her. Yeah. Oh, I'm on... speaking of side characters, we didn't really talk about, uh, we didn't really talk about mm -hmm. her that much, but I guess it's more appropriate to talk about her in the spoiler section. I also love Emmy. Emmy is the best. Oh, uh -huh. she's just, I agree with she's that. just Angel Charlie, but I love her. She's so adorable. I mean, she's got little, pu she's got puppy dog eyes by default. So cute. Mm -hmm. And just like her energy where she's like, my name's Emily. You can call me Emily. M E. I don't really care. I go by whatever. I'm just so happy to. I'm just so. I'm just so happy to have new guests to show around. Oh man. And then of course you know she and Darren Chris St. Peter got to lead. Welcome to heaven. And then when uh, she and Charlie synced up because oh they're both my, like oh my god different sides of the same coin. And they were different sides of the same uh, of the, the singer spectrum. Uh, like Char Char Charlie has more of the alto. And uh, M has more of the soprano. I loved, loved their team up mm. song. That was intense. If I was for a rap, they yeah. were so in sync. Oh yeah, that was amazing. Uh, okay, so I so jumping around. Uh, let's let, let's let's talk about that bitch loot. Fuck her. Fuck her. She killed Dazzle. Oh, oh yeah. She killed Dazzle. Indeed. Fuck her. Yep. Rest Good in peace. Rest in peace, Dazzle. Funny thing, I actually looked up to see who voiced her. Oh. Uh, she isn't the Alphaba that we all know, but she was Alphaba on Broadway for a while. Nice! But yeah, fuck loot. She killed Dazzle. Never forgive her. I thought you said Dazzle survived. No, no. No, I was wrong. Razzle I, I, I was wrong. Razzle, Razzle was the one that survived. Dazzle was the one that got the building crushed on them. And also, if you Oh, look, you got my whole up for nothing that night. My bad. I apologize. If you look, Dazzle has their own golden statue outside of the new Aspen Hotel. Yep. Rest in peace, Dazzle. Uh, Damn it, the naming thing all messed up now for her path. Right? Exactly. It's just Razzle. It, it, it doesn't work. Man. But yeah. But hey, Razzle, Razzle, at Razzle. least, uh, I, I don't, I don't see another world that go well with, da with Dazzle. Uh, well, no, no. It, it needs to go well with Razzle. Razzle's the one that's lost. No, no, I mean as a placement for Dazzle. That's what I'm saying. Ah. Uh, Okay. Hmm. Razzle. No, that's more Razzmatazz. That doesn't work. But yeah. Uh. Okay. We need a tie. We need at a... least Razzmatazz. We need a Matazz. Okay. Okay. Next pick gotta be Matazz. We gotta fix the name. Yep. Okay. We're not gonna have Dazzle too. That that messed up for the for OG Razzle. That OG Dazzle. I don't like it when people do that for their dogs. That's weird. Oh name, yeah. Name, Indeed. Name, 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 name yeah. Shit. But I, I I don't want to get the same brain where a dog died. Yeah, no, that's fair. But anyways, I will say mm. I will say that uh, at least the other uh, animal sidekick, which was awesome, was a uh, fuck nuggets. Oh yeah, fuck nuggets. Glad he made it. Good for you, fuck nuggets. You didn't get turned into bacon. Definitely gave me uh, reminded me of Waddles, and not just because he totally he's he, he totally reminded me of Waddles. He, it looks like the same kind of pig design and the same energy. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, 
M, M was cool. Uh, I I love I love her reaction to the end. She just has this like she's like she's geeking out uh, and you know for obvious reasons. Um, fuck you, YouTube thumbnail and recommendation. Seriously, program. YouTube algorithm. What the fuck, man? Spoiled both Brian yeah. and David. Cause that was the thing is uh the Lord Pinches reveal. It's a two-parter thing, and ironically enough, I was spoiled for one half, but David was spoiled for the other. Yep. Brian- Brian- I was on your thought, okay, they're gonna let him- oh, I didn't think he would die. Yeah. Brian found out he died. Brian did not know he was gonna end up in heaven. You found out he was gonna be in heaven. You didn't know he was gonna die. Uh, but man, first of all, what a legend. Rest in peace. And like, what a way to go out. Just fucking taking Cherry Bomb and being like, I love you. Big epic kiss. Explosion in the background. You go, buddy. Mm. But uh, And she was like, damn, that's kind of hot. But now that, now, yeah. now that I've given you praise and you're positive, Pentius, like, I, I gotta talk to you, buddy. I gotta talk to you. What the yeah. fuck, man? You have tested that blimp time and time again. When has that ever worked? Tony, play the clip. It's never worked. <laughs> never, never, never. I don't know why you thought it was gonna work. I respect the effort. It was a valiant effort, but I'm not gonna lie. That shit was hilarious. Tony, play well, the clip. Play my clip. Play that clip and put that in when you're editing. But uh, I think part of it was just, he knew that it was gonna explode. That's why he gave her the kiss, like he wasn't gonna make it, but yeah. Still, dude. Oh, yeah. But, I just look like, oh, bam. Okay. Oh, we're doing, oh yeah. Holy light, fuckers! Bam, bam, bam. He, he was like, oh, well, that could have been ugly. <laughs> it, it, it ugly. Was, it, it, no, no. What well, was going to be annoying? Not ugly. It was just it, annoying. It was, it was like somebody noticing a mosquito. It was like, ugh. That was crazy. Um, I think his acknowledgement was that that could have worked, but it didn't. Yeah. But anyway, seeing Emily and Sarah react though at the end yep certified proof now m's like the hotel work m's like now Emily's gonna be like see sarah she was right all right charlie show me the receipt you want me to see okay so first how you doing oh. oh man also i like his heaven i like his heaven look he looks good in white yep um good thing good thing they didn't have it just saying why it's just awful to deal with although although i will say i wish that they had kept him in his napoleon outfit i loved him in his napoleon outfit that was a sponge case outfit that ain't anything normal well yeah but like he died in it he looked real cool in a white napoleon outfit i'm just saying yeah but also pop probably didn't do that because white napoleon just looks like modern day dress white fair fair uh but yeah the pauldron yeah with pauldrons it has pauldrons there is a difference but yeah so good for serpentius uh that's the hotel uh, in general yeah, yeah dude that final fight, man, holy shit. Also, mm -hmm. man, talk about catharsis. You go, Vaggy. Mm -hmm. Fuck that bitch up. And I love her line. She goes, no, I'm not gonna, no, I'm not gonna kill you. I'm gonna let you live and let you live with the fact that you have to know that you only live because I allow it. That was badass. Yep. And yeah, that's a massage for Adam being a womanizer. That's why Danny said they get a piece of that after. <laughs> Right? Because you know she she, she loved the guy, sadly. <laughs> uh, well I was getting that vibe, like she was jelly on baggy, like get away the tent dig, he knows you, you get the high praise. Oh, oh, oh you, oh, you like, oh, man, oh, yeah. oh yeah, no, I, I think I think that's the whole reason Vaggy was so like or that's, I think that's the whole reason Loot was so anti Vaggy was because Vaggy used because we already know Vaggy Adam even said Vaggy was his top bitch. Like, also, I don't know if this is me looking too much into things, but it also seems like Loot was homophobic. Definitely. I mean, the 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 way the way the way she, the way she the way she phrased things. The the only the only other the only uh the uh, the only thing that w would have made it more obvious is she, she dropped the f bomb. The other F bomb, not the one Charlie dropped on the old lady. Oh, you talk about don't that 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 one is that that one's a total nuke. Don't do it. Don't you fucking do it. Do it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> you scared the shit out of me, asshole. Anyways, uh, God damn it. Keep that in there. Uh, I'm gonna put you in hell. You too, hell. I was, I, I, was, that one. I was already going there. I bought my vacation home and everything. 
I say YouTube hell, not normal hell. Oh damn it! No, no YouTube already hates it. You, yeah, I was say YouTube does already hate me. But anyways, uh, speaking but speaking of hell once again, uh, yeah, I think uh, let, let's go ahead and talk about Lilith and Alistair. Cause let's go to speculation. Cause they're holy shit. There's a lot to talk about. So I have a personal theory. I um I've kind of backtracked on it a little bit. Oh thank God, because I feel you had a whack on stream. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Which theory are you? T which, which theory are you thinking of? I don't have, I don't, I don't have asking going down to hell because of. Uh -huh. No, that's that's still that's still there. He really don't need her help for that. Yes, he does. How the fuck does a regular ass dude open a portal to hell, a whole nother realm that you can't access? He's the first blade man. He what got he got to treat me in jail. No, the fuck he. What the fuck? You, Extra. You, you, you read the Adam said to be up there. What? Yes. He had to read to be in heaven. Yes, he did because there was nobody else. There was no other criteria when he was created. So yeah, he got to go up there. Anyway, go back to your. There theory. is no such thing as deserved back then. So yeah, he got in by default. So uh, what I was saying, we hell is hell is sealed off. We couldn't even see Sarah. Oh, Sarah couldn't even open up a portal or anything like that. She didn't do any of that shit. Adam could do it. in how usually how this shit works and how like it's described in a, a lot of other media. The only people that can open up portals to other holy or unholy domains are the rulers of said domain. Clearly, Lucifer did not give Adam access to this portal. We see where Lilith is at. Lilith is chilling in heaven on a beach. And then Loot shows up with Adam's halo. And she says, well, Adam is dead. Your deal is done. What deal could Lilith make with Adam to, for have, to have her be able to chill in heaven? What the, he what the hell could she offer him? She Fuck him? He's got plenty of other bitches to fuck. Doesn't really matter. She has access to hell because she ruled hell. And what, and what did they, what did Loot tell Lilith to do? Go down there and get your child. She is the only one that can open up portals to get down there. So her part of the deal was to facilitate the portals to start extermination day. And the whole, the whole thing, right, is the fact that Lilith, we know with her songs, inspired hell. But we don't know what that in inspiration means. It could have honestly just meant that the people of hell were happy. But Adam, seeing that the people of hell were happy, being the bitter, toxic asshole he is, I don't want to see my ex living her best life or being happy or being fucking happy. No, fuck that. But then he actually goes and talks to Lilith and she's like, eh, I don't really want to be here. Tell you what, I'll help you get here. You talk to your higher ups. Give me a, give me a place to stay and I'll help. Now, he spins it to Sarah, like, look, Sarah, Lilith is organizing these demons to form an uprising. I think we're in trouble, but I have a way to deal with it. And remember, Sarah doesn't know all the nitty gritty details because when Adam was going off, Sarah was still kind of just like, I didn't really know. I just made a choice. So Sarah isn't, she's complicit in the fact that she let it happen, but I don't think she knew the full extent of the situation. And that's clear when we see how like M reacts and she's just like, okay, I didn't know it was all like this. You have to understand. I was, I was just trying to make the call that I thought was best for everyone. So my, my whole thing is right. I think there, there are two possible avenues to this. Uh, the, the first major avenue is that because Lilith was made from the same dust as Adam, we see that Adam is the first man and the pro a perfect example of toxic masculinity. So on the other end of the spectrum, it could be that since Lilith was made from the same stuff and is the first woman, she is the example of toxic femininity, which is shallowness, manipulativeness, deceit, being deceitful, underhanded. So she could easily have been a bad guy, a, a, willing to just be an anime parent, fuck off, abandon their child, or- I'll pause for a second. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm so used to hear just nothing but toxic my energy. And then I came to my thought, there's toxic femininity. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, there's toxic femininity. There's plenty of toxic I, I women the out there. I know toxic woman. I just never thought where I could have a term for that. Okay, good. I'm going to use that a lot more now. Yeah. Anyway, go, go ahead. Feel go free. Back off. Feel free. All right. So the uh, so you know that's the op. That's an option. She's she could have been. She could have been. She could be the embodiment of toxic femininity and been an anime parent, just fucked off, abandoned their child because you know she's shallow and you know doesn't uh like hell isn't what she thought it was gonna be. Her husband is a, her husband isn't the hot, sexy dreamer he used to be. He's a sad, depressed mess. I'm out. 
Bye. Or it could be that Lilith's deal with Adam to start Extermination Day, sure, she, you know, helped out with that, but she had insurance in the back pocket in the form of Alistair. And her plan was a long game plan to get Adam killed. And so now that Adam's dead, she is going to find a way to try and help Charlie and, you know, uh, help her see her dreams through for real. And, you know, a part of that that I mentioned before is like, we know that Lucifer in the beginning of the show was a, you know, sad, depressed mess, uh, like completely given up on his dream. And that probably turned Lilith off and probably one of the major reasons why they divorced. However, we see Lucifer now, he's got a fire back in his heart. So if Lilith comes back and sees that, mom and dad might just get back together. I mean, come on, Lilith. The pa he knew past it, making rubber ducky and not good enough for you. He made some bomb ass rubber ducky. They are bomb ass rubber duckies. Um, oh, hell yeah. You, you don't want to say for that alone on the kiss? I, uh, I, uh, <laughs> that new dream ain't good enough for you? I also think that Alistair, everybody thinks that Alistair is going to be a big bad, but I don't think that's the case. I I think what it is, right, is that like Alistair, yeah. like Alistair wants to get out of his deal, but it's not because he doesn't want to help Charlie. I think he wants to get out of his deal so that he can, because his deal was to sabotage the hotel, but look like he was helping. He wants, I think he wants to get out of the deal so that he can fully help the hotel, but not for any like altruistic reasons. Cause like he's a good guy or whatever. He wants to really help the hotel so he can make a full ally out of Charlie and groom Charlie's power so that when Charlie comes to full power, he'll be one of her best friends and therefore have her in his corner. Like he sang in the Cannibal Town song. I can see that. Also, yeah, I don't see him as I don't see him as a good guy or a bad guy. Just a oh yeah, just chaotic an, third party that's yeah. in it for himself. Yeah, just an opportunist. I don't see him as yeah. I don't see him as particularly no, good or bad. I don't believe uh, in the benefit of getting anything for friends. No, all, no, an altruist is somebody who somebody who does uh, something just out of the goodness of their heart. Okay, I get the right definition. Uh, I don't I don't have the right name for it, but you, you, you just want to say. Well, yeah, uh, I, like I said, opportunist. That's exactly what I said. He's just out. He just he just out for himself. He's just you know seeking opportunity. Yeah, your mic cut off. Is my mic cutting off? Well, not now, but it was a second ago. Was it? Just for a brief second. Okay, so whatever. Anyways, uh, I I see him. I see him as just an opportunist. You know, uh. He he's, he he likes his friends enough, and he wants to help them, but he's only helping them because he sees a benefit. So. I, I can see that. Also, back to Lilith, mm -hmm. I saw somebody else uh, point out something interesting. Okay. In, like, all the, the like, pictures that we see of Lilith, she's uh, one of the key things that she's known for is her pearl necklace. Yep. Oh, this thing ain't gone. Um, when she when she's pulling Charlie away in the flashback, and when we see her in modern time, she's not wearing it. Okay. So I've seen at least one person theorize that maybe she's an imposter, Lilith. Somebody played the Among Us music. Interesting. An imposter, huh? I I, I don't I don't think I don't think that would really could really I think go the anywhere. Necklace is, I'm not buying one. Uh, fuck. I'm not buying that at all. I just think the, the new necklace is just she changed the whole idea in life. Oh yeah, yeah. that yeah. could be a good symbolism for that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I think it's just the equivalent of like you know, you know when uh, women get a new haircut after a new rela after a, like after getting out of a relationship. True. And who knows, we might find out that uh, Lucifer gave her the pearl necklace. Yeah. Oh, I mean, he definitely gave her a pearl necklace. I mean, they have a kid together, so yeah. He, uh, or... uh, and, a, and a parent... Oh, speaking of kids, that's another thing I want to bring up that I uh, that I brought up off camera. So I did some research into the Zohar, which is uh, tor basically it's what I call Torah DLC. It's the oral tradition of the Torah collected into a book uh, that's actually separate from the Torah. These are the stories that were uh, like that make up the Torah, but weren't written down. They were just passed down orally. Um, and in those stories is where we first really get our uh, first glimpse of Lilith. And something that we find out in this expanded version of Genesis is that uh, like when Lucifer or the serpent came into the garden and gave Eve the fruit, that wasn't all he did. In this version of the story, he impregnated Eve and that line uh, that line of children between Eve and Lucifer gave rise to Cain. If you don't know who Cain is, 
you didn't pay attention in Sunday school or Bible study, Cain is the son of quote unquote Adam and Eve, who is the first murderer, and he was cursed by God to be immortal and walk the earth for all of eternity with a mark on his forehead to know so that everyone who sees him is aware of his sin. So if hell of a boss, I mean, if Hasbro Hotel is borrowing from this, which I definitely think they are at least a little bit, because another thing that they mention in the Zohar is the fact that uh, God warns Lilith if Lilith is to leave the garden, then uh, then a curse will be placed upon her, where one hundred of her children will be murdered every day. Doesn't that sound familiar? Extermination day. Uh, so could be that. Uh, Charlie has a half-brother, and we heard Lucifer's little joke towards Adam. Hey, your first wife liked what I had to offer. And the second, still pelvic thrust. Yeah. So, that could be interesting. Oh yeah, indeed. I also think that Adam is definitely... We saw Serpentius get reincarnated into heaven. Adam's going to hell. 100% yep. going yep. to hell. I think the only reason ha Adam didn't go to hell the first time is because hell didn't exist yet. Yeah, I think so, too. Oh, yeah. Indeed. Loot's going to be a big threat. Oh, yeah. And she's going to be, like, even more so at out for Vaggie. I, uh, I heard an interesting theory that I think is, uh, uh, does make a lot of sense. I think that Vox will team up with Lou, like, in secret to help create armor that is more angelic weapon proof. And then at the same time, Vox will play both sides and start selling more of his angel security texts uh -huh. so that he'll make money either way. Oh, yeah, that totally makes sense. Also, like, Alistair's microphone getting broken like that was a genuine surprise to Alistair. So it makes me wonder, like, what really is the source of his power? Okay, first thing first, he underran Adam fucking skill. He underran, he is him. He's the first superstar ham, sadly. No, I don't know. It just, it just, it just felt weird. Cause like- You were talking that, he was talking that hard stuff to Adam before he, before he got kicked in the face. Oh my God, got that cane broken. I mean, he talk, he talks the hot shit to everybody, but I don't know. I, it just, it just feels, it just feels like he was genuinely surprised. Cause like, come on. Like, I know, I know Alistair is hit him. And he's done some crazy shit, but he had to know uh, that since this dude is the leader of the exorcist, that he wasn't going to be an easy fight. So, I don't know, some, it just feels kind of off that he was surprised when his mic was broken. Yep, but I will say one thing, that uh, it was interesting that uh, we also found out that the mic isn't responsible for his radio voice. Because he goes back to it after he does the, what the fuck? Yep. Yeah, his mic still okay. isn't back yet. The yeah. thing with the whole voice thing is, sorry, the more the more truthful he is, and you know, cut cut the BS away, the clearer his voice. So like when he clear, that mean that he meant what he's saying. That at least that one word was center. So that whole yeah. period that he realized, oh, I'm screwed. Oh yeah. No, but but like the the no, what he said, what, what Brian was saying is just the the, the radio, the uh, his radio voice was still around even without the mic, because we all thought that the 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 mic was where he was getting the radio voice it's probably a drip dude mm -hmm. also he still has that favor for charlie which is going to be huge because i think that'll be his way of like getting out of the deal with lilith because and but still being able to help charlie because i because uh -huh. i don't think his problem was the fact that he helped charlie i think the problem was that he put he had to put himself on the line right because that's what he said in his part of the song like you know altruist alistair died for his friends no, no, this is not where my story ends. Yep. Yep. But he came right back. That he did. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I, so I definitely think he, like, he's going, he's going to find a way for Charlie to undo the deal. And I think the key to that will be getting Charlie to, like, tap into her full power, which is another thing, right? So Charlie is a rare case because Charlie is half angel, half demon. So mm -hmm. even if loot comes up with like more angel uh, like angelic steel proof like defenses charlie if she can tap into her angel powers could still fuck people up yep also i know the sorry no go ahead i know the red claw was partially a callback to uh, charlie's original design but could it also be a hint at charlie's like true form yeah that's what i'm saying i think by the end of the series, Charlie is going to have... Maybe this is just because I played Tekken, and this is what happened in Tekken. Charlie, you know, Charlie party in Angel Mode right now, and she might go for Demon. 
Well, what I was going to say was, I think by the end of the series, Charlie's going to have like this form where she has like the, the six wings, like Lucifer, but like half of them are white and half of them are red. So she can like tap into both sides of herself. It's like, it's like when Ichigo, for anime fans, it's like when Ichigo and Zongetsu like have like they uh, have their talk in the Waco Mundo arc and he can finally like go full hollow without like it taking over and making him go crazy. And I mean, with how anime inspired a lot of this stuff is in the Hellverse, I totally see them going down this kind of arc. Yep. Hey, Jay, mm -hmm. you ever realize with Adam, like he constantly tried to like make the seven to go through and stop Charlie? Right? Yeah. And, and like all the angels like I don't know about him, like, eh, you uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And now you also mentioned about Alistair, you know, trying to make Charlie a true demon. Well, just more powerful. More powerful. But, you know, the song, the song Caramel Town mentioned, like, Puff of the Throne. Yeah. Okay. My idea is Lilla make Lilla. The part of the deal Lilla made with Adam is Adam, you have to do the sermon they say, and you make this a yearly thing or a bi yearly thing with a change there. Like, maybe, like, Adam probably did get fucked about it but like hey this sounds fun why not you know be a little bit the mental layer but when you know when you find out someone trying to stop this shit like fuck this is my part of the deal i'm gonna deal with the, with you know the original demon and she might have alistair to like get get totally up to be a proper rule of hell i i, I see the second part for sure I, I for some reason it does it doesn't sit with me that she would order the extermination of her own people okay think about it this way hell luther no longer had the dream hell ain't the place she, she wanted to be i think Lila turned to a hard reset of hell at least put her daughter in charge okay see from that angle i could see that i could see that you're like oh the idea the plan failed you know let me try maybe, how about you try slide back to zero down here clear all the clear all the trash keep all the people we like and i could see that kind of thing yeah Okay, I I get that, but all right. Because I'm... like because like Adam is a deuce, and like this the idea of the sermon is sound fun, but when like the time cancels, I like that don't seem like oh my fun gonna be done for. They're like I'm gonna be in trouble, and oh my ex wife, I'm kind of can't. Like, do we know what happened? If we just break a deal with the demon here. Nope, we don't know the rules of that. Okay, so the guy be a no. downside about that. And yeah, so of course. Him, Boy, that cancellation of the sermon now, but here's my th here's my thing though, right? Like Luke was talking about since Adam's dead, their deal, their like uh, the deal is voided. But like, what would happen if you know Adam does pop up in hell? He's technically not dead. Well, also we don't know for sure. We don't know if if, if Adam get to come back at all. So that that's just your guy Lisa. So like, hey, Vizzy might make a thing like, hey, no, it's uh, that not gonna happen. I don't know. I mean, Sir Frank just came but back. I mean, went Also, up. what I was going to say is we also don't know if the deal that she made with Adam was a deal deal or not just like normal deal. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Fair. It could have just been a regular you do this like quid pro quo type beat. Yeah. Not like actual sign on the dotted line deal. Yep. All right. Well, now that we're done with speculation, Let's go ahead into final thoughts, ratings, and favorite songs. You don't have to do particular order unless you have an order for one. I only know what my favorite song is. I'm going to say the others in no particular order. Uh, so we will start with David. Final thoughts, ratings, and favorite songs. Did David die? Did I die? Hello, people? I can hear oh, you. Shit. Sorry, right. Sorry, 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 sorry. I, I forgot. I need to pick you. <laughs> um... My favorite song is arguably is the second episode one. Uh, what we call with Vazor and Alistair? Uh, you you talking about the the one with uh, oh you said Alistair and who? Vox, the TV guy. Oh, Vox and Alistair. Oh yeah, Vox. Oh, I um, I don't know what the song is called, but I know what, I know the song you're talking about. That is my favorite one. So it's for season one. Second one is I had to for the bit guy, but having to <laughs> shit. I don't know the song name by half, but you know the, the one he first sang when he got met, met everyone at the hotel. Oh, you you yeah, you're talking about more than anything. No, not more anything. You know the one he had the pissing contest with Alistair. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Got you got you. Um, see what else? Rating song and what other thing you say? Final thoughts, rating, and favorite songs. Final thoughts is like I, I, I love I love it. I I I, 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 I yeah I love it. it, 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 it 
Sorry. Um, yeah, I really do love the show. Um, I I think it hit. I think it hit the point around episode four when I did get to the whole groove a groover thing. Um, I give it like a nine. All right. Okay. Wait, wait, I'll do five. I'll do five to five. No, no, 10 no. To 10. No, we're doing out of ten. We're doing out of ten. You uh, you good? All right. So next up, Tony. Final thoughts, ratings, favorite song. Go. Damn, we're having a lot of long pauses between these. Tony. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. I saw this shit. Tony, are you asleep? Tony. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. He's here. I thought I thought he I thought he knocked out on us. Uh final thoughts, rating, favorite songs, go. Great show. Ten out of ten. Loser. Done. Alright. Okay. Ryan, you know the drill by now. You stood with the you stood through the long yeah. pauses. I'm not gonna have the long pause this time. Uh I hadn't talked that much, or at least as much as I usually do. Oh, but I really love this show. Uh I love anything, like, my favorite thing is when you can have something that's, like, more than one genre combined. Oh, yeah. And this is that. It's got great animation, great songs, humor's great. I might be a little biased being a former choir kid and, like, loving all this stuff. But I think, in the end, this is going to be my first recorded, because the other one was currently lost, but could someday see the light of day. But current canonical, 10 out of 10. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, for me. And I uh-huh. and no, I loved it, and I think my favorite song. Shit, there's a lot. Of you things. can say songs. I said songs. Tony only said one, but I I said songs. You can say more than okay. one. Okay. Okay. Uh, I briefly mentioned it before, but whatever it takes, mm. and that is like a rock ballad, and I loved it. Oh yeah. And that passion and everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, the obvious one, show must go on. Yeah. Okay. And I guess lastly, if I get a third, Poison. All right. Because it, it was classic, like, 90s, 80s pop, but then had that really good, really tragic ending, sad ending to it. Oh, yeah. Feel that. So for me, look, man, I'm a fucking theater kid. I loved this shit. I eat this kind of shit up. It has deep lore, dope animation, fantastic songs. Oh, like the, the the female characters lines are pretty hot uh-huh. i'm here for all of it i give this a fucking 10 out of 10 this show was amazing it lived up to the hype i loved every single song but choosing favorites i'm gonna i'm gonna give five out uh my absolute favorite song uh if you couldn't tell by the intro of the podcast is loser loser is my absolute favorite song i love the jazzy vibe to it i'm a sucker for jazz you you, you, get, you put a jazzy vibe to a tune i'm gonna be here for it uh the other one that I love the most is more than anything, both the Lucifer Charlie version and the Vaggy Charlie version. Beautiful, beautiful song. Love the message behind oh, yeah. it. And the third one that I love the message behind and also just love the vibe of the song. Uh, do uh, Out for Love. I'm a sucker for castanets, man. Call it racial bias, but fucking... Killed. Also, shout out to you, Busy Pop, for all the Hispanic representation. Let's oh, go. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Shout out for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Out for Love, fantastic. Uh, the other the other song that I, that I really dig, the, the fourth one, is definitely Poison. Poison is just really catchy. I love, like Brian said, I love the classic pop vibe to it. And the other one for another classic pop vibe, I was singing the riff the entire time of the podcast, but... <laughs> Come on, man. I grew up on NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. I love that shit. You got Darren Crass to do a boy band type song? Hell yeah. Oh, uh-huh. Man was made for that. Uh, so, absolutely love the show. Hi, oh, near the, near the song I sing, gone. Sorry. Okay, sorry. That was fucking bothering me. No, you're good. You're good. I, I would have done the same. But yeah, so absolutely fucking love this show. It's a treat. I need season two like yesterday. Uh, man, it's, it's it's just so good. Like, I can't sing its praises enough. Like, I'm sure if I was n- super nitpicky, I could find things that were wrong with it. But just in terms of pure enjoyment factor, nah, man, 10 out of 10, 100%. Like, no 10 notes. 10, 10 out of 10 for like 10 year of work she be doing for this So Oh, hell yeah. Good. And that effort, that effort clearly shows and paid off. You know, hat, hats off to you, Vizzy. Fucking... Yeah, if you go down to a YouTube channel and just get all this, you, 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 the second video she have, it just a dry angel dust. 
for mm. 10 years ago. Like how long should we have the character constant design and just being walking never ending? Oh, See, yeah. Like oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, and, and, and like, that's just mad respect. Like, you know, if we're going to close yeah. it out on anything, just mad respect for the dedication and just, you know, very much yeah. like, like Charlie, not giving up on your dream. Like, yeah. So and years also, ago, just and bravo. Then... Yep. Go, ahead, go ahead, Brian. You go first. All right. Thanks. I was just going to say bravo to all the damn Easter eggs. I mean, even more than like Marvel. Yeah. Like so much thought is put into every episode, man. Like I wish uh, other network shows like put this much care into their shit. And, you know, some of the shows that do unfortunately get unrenewed i'm still mad about inside job netflix i'm never not going to be salty about it uh but yeah this show is fucking great uh i can't wait for season two uh we are 100 percent going to cover it and uh we'll definitely cover yeah. hell of a boss when season two wraps up as well yeah like seven years ago i first saw the original trailer i'm like oh this is a cool shit let me like follow and favorite this video <laughs> shit favorite sort of thing back then oh wow. man oh yeah i'm like this is a, a cool. I tell you what else you were man. I, I did think this so I do get a so, green light. I I thought it would be like a form one woman in the project. Honestly, I, I yeah, did. it's a it's a real success story, and I'm 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 happy for it. Well, actually, the funny thing is, is this is the second time that Amazon has greenlit an animated show based on a popular oh, oh, online yeah. property. Oh yeah. Vox. A lot of fan base behind it. Yeah, Vox. Which by the way, I looked into some numbers. Has been outdid Vox. Fuck what? It did? Yeah. Has been's premiere outdid Vox's premiere. Oh, dude, well, nice. yeah. Well yeah. Well yeah. Well yeah. Has been has ten years worth of build up. Of course it's gonna outdo Vox, but still still huge a huge accomplishment. Oh yeah. Uh Vox had uh like seven. Yep. Like, still. Yeah. Y yep. But yeah, so you know, I I never I never thought I'd say this, but thank you, Amazon. You, you're doing mm -hmm. you're doing good in your animated department at least. Invincible's great. Fucking. I mean, you gotta, work on, been, you gotta yeah. work on the release. Yeah, work on the release for Invincible. Come yeah. On, Amazon. Yeah. Also, can you get a little bit more consistent in your releases? Yeah, like please, please, you know, no, like as as in like pick a formula. Episode release. Yeah, as in like pick a formula. Like, Netflix has the binge drop, but now they're sometimes moving to weekly. But, like, Amazon does this weird thing where they do, we drop two episodes a week. We do one episode a week. No, we do three. Make up your mind, Amazon. Let's let draw no, half we're, we're gonna do a whole day. season drop. Make the rest week, week weekly. Yeah, that's it's fucking weird, yeah. bro. Fucking yeah. weird. Because yeah. around the same... Around the same, like, I think it was around the same week, they released two shows, Expat and Mr. and Ms. Smith, which were both live-action originals. One is weekly, one is a season drop. So you never know with fucking Amazon. It's weird. Pick one! I don't fuck with Amazon. I don't mess with Amazon so like that, uh, you know, besides Invisible and, and has been. But I didn't know it was this big of a mess. Oh, it's, yeah, it's that big of a mess. Because we cover a yeah, lot, we um, cover a lot of Amazon shows. Gen V, when, The Boys. When Fox was airing, they would release it three episodes at a time. Yeah, Tony was the only one to watch Vox in real time. Why just make it to say, oh, I have lost so <laughs> Nobody fucking knows. They don't want to make sense, Dave. They don't want right, to make so sense. I look at the, pilot, the very first pilot, 98 million on YouTube. And, you know, she, it's, you know, it, the, the way it has been was, she won't go and make no money. But, like, I can imagine that being all, the, 90, the 98 million people waiting for this show to come out. Plus, built up on Hell of a Boss. So, yeah, no wonder they're doing more than Vox. Oh, yeah. Shoot, I know. Uh, is it doing more than Invisible? I don't know that much. I just, I, I just, I just saw, I just saw an article somewhere that, uh, that has been from your outdid Vox. It might have outdid mm. Invincible. Makes sense if it did. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, show's great. A unanimous 10 out of 10 is fucking wild. Except for our guys. Yeah, yeah, but... yeah. But I mean... Well, I didn't know you guys threw 10 out of 10 like that here. We don't. No. That's the thing. We don't. We don't. But it was this like good. Like I said, David, this is my first time in doing the podcast where I have ever given a 10 out of 10. Yeah, Brian popped his cherry on this one. He, this is his first 10 out of 10. This is like my This is like my third. Sure, if I didn't know... If I know the standard a little bit lower... Yeah, 10 out of 10. Hey, the standard or low. But yeah, all right. Unanimous 10 out of 10. Let's go. 
Hell yeah. yeah. We don't we we don't mind last second changes around here. Shit. We you know how many times Cap has last second changed after talking with us? Totally. And uh, I've done it before. I say on, on camera. It's all it's all it's all allowed. But yeah. So uh thank you, David, for uh for being on. It was fun. Uh we will definitely have you back for season two and for uh Hell of a Boss season two as well. Well when that wraps up. Uh you got anything to plug before we wrap up? Just follow me on Twitch on iKing Devin 95D. I do anime Ratchet. Um Gasha Game. Can you play on Fate Fate Samurai Redneck? And may all the suck with Jay Brown. Hey, hey, season two. Go on Ratchet that one. That come out. Hell yeah. All right. Don't be against your S, please. Busy. I, I know I know how crazy you go ham. <laughs> but yeah, so uh this has been the Channel Chasers Podcast, and we will see you guys next week. But before we go, mm. Brian, tell the folks at home what we'll be covering next week for this special week of the Valentine's. Well, we're actually going to be going to the theater and discussing a monster of a different sort because in the yet another again thing we are covering something that we saw the trailer for and the thing that we're doing lisa frankenstein yes this weird off the wall horror comedy uh starring uh i always forget her name when i need to remember it girl from detective pikachu what is her name Catherine newton Catherine newton thank you i'm you sorry just hit me i'm sorry Catherine newton i remember your name when i don't have to say it on the spot Starring Catherine Newton and Cole Sprouse. And the most important part is it is the directorial debut of one Zelda Williams. If you guys don't know who Zelda Williams is, Zelda Williams is the daughter of Robin Williams. Yep. And the script was done by Diablo Cody, mm -hmm. who made her first notable thing with uh, Juno. Yep. And Juno is a classic. Okay, I thought you meant Zelda from the game. Ah, I, I mean, okay. I mean, Robin Williams named her after Zelda from the game. We, I love you. Rest in peace, Rob. Fun fact: she was also she was almost named Epona. He was he almost named her after the horse. Uh, but yeah. So look forward to that, and uh, you know, our episode will be probably will probably come out the week after Valentine's. So uh. Happy Valentine's Day, people, or happy Single Awareness Day. I don't, uh, you know, I don't know your lives. Well, protect, well, protect you. Or don't. It's happy your whatever. It's your choice. Remember, self love is still a thing. Also, you know, if you if you really feel like it, free will, raw dog it. <laughs>